uh, Laura Taylor, who's the National Director of Social Work for VA, who's going to tell us a little bit more about all of the issues related to integrating care as well as attending to social needs. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dr. Southpaw, and hello, everyone. It's, it's really an honor and a privilege to be a, a member of this very distinguished panel. Uh, next slide. I do not have uh, anything to disclose today, although I did want to sort of level set and uh, reaffirm what some of the other panelists mentioned was the National Academy's report um, um, and recommendation on integrating social care into healthcare delivery and the potential that it holds to help achieve better outcomes. And my, my remarks will largely center around um, what we're finding in that space from the social work perspective. Next slide. So as was previously mentioned, I believe, uh, yesterday by Dr. Kirch, um, VA is one of the largest employers um, in the federal government. And um, specifically, we have over 16,000 master's prepared social workers on staff in VA. I um, mean, we also train over 1,500 graduate level social work students every year in our system. Next slide. This is just a demographic slide that tells you a little bit more about that workforce, um, the grade levels from a, a salary perspective or sort of where they fall in our um, strata, as well as some additional demographics that outline our workforce. Next slide. On this slide, I offer you the World Health Organization's definition on the social determinants of health. Um, and I believe um, Dr. Washington mentioned that essentially this is the conditions um, where people live, work, and play. And on the next slide, you can see how we um, sort of categorize or look at from a social work perspective to help define what those social determinants are. What does that mean? So we look at, you know, financial concerns, legal concerns, perhaps transportation barriers, uh, exposure to violence, uh, discrimination, uh, perhaps employment or unemployment, um, housing or food concerns, and so on. Next slide um, talks about really what are Oops, one additional slide there. Catch back up. Next slide. There we go. Um, so the this slide talks about sort of what are the guiding principles that are used in social work practice. Um, and I think this has been mentioned previously by some of the panelists today, um, but just wanted to kind of express and explain our perspective as we look at the social conditions and how to help veterans that we're serving who are members of these special populations that have been referenced or other special populations such as spinal cord injury or amputees or um, certainly visually impaired veterans among a wide variety um, of other um, veterans. Um, so Social workers really take this holistic view of the person. We put them in the center, if you will, of their treatment plan. And then we look at um, where there are challenges or concerns in, within their um, uh, life experience, their community, their family unit, their system of care. And really our assessment is sort of focused around that person. And as issues are identified or social determinants of health deficits are identified, we build our treatment plan around the, those deficits or what that veteran wants to do. We use the biopsychosocial perspective um, and as part of our assessment process, um, we make sure to identify any strengths that that person brings to the table um, or that they have, that they use and rely on within their own um, current state. Um, and then for those of you that have worked alongside social workers, you know that we are staunch supporters of each human being's right to self-determine and make their own decisions and their own preferences, even when they aren't maybe the decisions that um, we want them to make, um, but really to make sure that we're respecting that um, aspect of um, their choices and to help support them to um, their greatest level of wellness and independence. 
On the next slide, they're just um, uh, it's just a snapshot of the clinical social work skills, and, and I'm not going to read each and every one of these, but I've already mentioned um, the comprehensive or clinical assessments, really how we identify veterans who might be at risk or high risk or complex or who may have social determinants of health. Um, or other barriers to care. We also complete um, quite a number of different screenings within our scope of practice um, within the VA system. And I've already mentioned developing treatment plans. And then finally, probably the most we're commonly known for is um, being a referral source or um, someone who links veterans to community resources or other VA programs or really understands all the complexities of the different programs that exist both within VA and in that veterans community. On the next slide, um, I offer um, that, you know, when there are challenges in the social determinants of health domains, that really access is impacted and sometimes significantly impacted. Um, and there are just some different um, kind of examples here of what we might see for um, what that might mean and, and has already been mentioned by some of the other panelists this morning, um, having, you know, no, higher no-show rates or um, repetitive ER visits, that person may find it more um, accessible for them to just ask, get their care through the ER. Um, there may be an increase in inpatient stays, um, both in number and duration. And when you think about, you know, if you don't have some of your basic needs covered, um, for example, if you um, don't have stable housing, then one's ability to coordinate your care um, you're really your focus is on trying to make sure that your housing sort of comes first, if you will, or um, if you are having trouble with a food source or reliable food source, it, you know, becomes really complicated to focus in on and coordinate your own care. Not to mention if there are multiple different appointments in multiple different locations or in multiple different clinics and with multiple different providers. Um, and then all of these things, of course, make it really challenging to um, comply, if you will, with the, the treatment plan. So on the next slide, um, we, I want to just share just briefly to highlight um, there, we have a, a paper in press uh, on this, um, some research that we've done out of Vision 4, specifically around the social determinants of health and how those um, impact um, ED utilization. Um, so we looked at nearly 300,000 patients um, who had had at least one visit during FY16. And on the next slide, you could see a little a breakdown of um, the categorizations. What we did was when a deficit in a social determinant of health domain listed in the top darker blue shaded um, grouping, was identified and written and documented in the medical record. Um, we indicated that um, then and really um, categorized into these different um, domains. And then on the bottom part of this specific slide, it talks about the number. So if a veteran experienced one deficit in one of those domains up above or two um, deficits in two different, et cetera. And on the next slide, uh, this graph um, shows that as the number of social determinants of health deficits a veteran had in their record increases, we saw a dose response like gradient of their use of the ED. And we saw this relationship even after accounting for important demographics like age, race, sex, urban or rural status. We also accounted for medical factors like um, medical comorbidity, whether the patient had been suicidal, had suicide ideation or attempt documented within their um, record. Next slide, I'm gonna pivot a little bit and tell you about a program that we've been doing. Um, we've had the, the honor of um, partnering with the Office of Rural Health 
um, in our patient aligned care teams to staff for some funding for staffing of social workers um, since FY16. And um, we've really tried to embed social workers in rural and highly rural areas to increase veterans access specifically um, in those locations to social work interventions. So uh, for some of you, you may be familiar that, you know, in many medical centers, if you're in a rural location, you have to kind of call back to the main site to get social, a social worker on site with that PAC team or PAC teams um, at that CBOC. So this um, program really has been working to um, put the social workers directly in those rural or highly rural locations. And on the next slide, what we've been doing is, um, and you all should have a handout on this, time doesn't allow for me to go into great detail here, um, but there's a handout as well as in one of my backup slides, specifically what the social work practice model is. We've trained um, these funded staff and others on this social work practice model. Um, and specifically, we asked those social workers to assess veterans in these six different domains that are listed here, and then to assign them an acuity rating within those domains of four being, um, you know, that they're in crisis in that specific domain, as opposed to one being where they can, they generally have their needs met and they are independent and maybe don't need any additional assistance. And so that has allowed us on the next slide to evaluate We've partnered, we have a query partnered evaluation center with the Center for Innovation for Long-Term Services and Supports at the Providence VA. And we've been able to partner with them and um, look at this um, cohort of veterans, almost 400,000 veterans, um, and really do some um, a deep dive into that social work intervention and how we're making a difference. If you move to the next slide, you can see, I, I just sort of show you on a map the span geographically on where our sample comes from. And on the next slide, there are findings specifically around what we, what the outcomes have been in that evaluation. So after introducing a social worker to the PAC team, the outcomes for that grouping of about 50,000 uh, high-risk uh, veterans um, who had that really high CAN score demonstrated a 4.4 decrease in veterans who had one or more hospitalization, a 3% decrease in veterans who had one or more ED visit, and an increase overall, 23% increase in being able to even access social work services for intervention in these social determinants of health. Um, and then beyond that group, uh, we had overall program outcomes that are listed here as well. So in conclusion, um, I just wanted to say that the social determinants of health factors um, that are experienced by the veterans that we serve definitely impact access. Um, and that I would offer a recommendation that a human-centered design um, be really utilized when thinking about how to construct or reconstruct access measures and what we're going to look at, what the committee will recommend. Routine identification. I appreciate your, your summary, and I think it would be good for us to do some uh, target some specific areas as we enter our discussion period now because it's such a rich environment and there's so many things that have been raised by our excellent panelists. I wanted to be certain that we targeted some specific areas as well as address some of the comments of the audience. 